Hi everyone. I got soup to cut. I didn't do a making video for this one. It was just I made it yesterday and it didn't take me very long. Um, but I just didn't film it. I think my battery on my phone was running out, so I couldn't do it. Anyway, it's Rolling Hills and it's similar to um, Black Sands, which I did on the last video. So same style. It's just a different colour. So this one is greens, which is the same as last year. Um, this one went down quite well. It's a pure essential oil blend. So we've got some cedar wood and some lavender, some lime and some juniper berry. Um, and there's one more thing and I can't remember what it is right now. But it's got a sort of very fresh and green herbal type of scent. And it's also uh, quite soothing as well. Oh, hang on. slightly different this time in that I've got a cocoa line on the top which I don't normally do it's normally just the green gradient all the way to the top but I really liked how the black sands one came out with the blue mica so I thought let's just use a bit of cocoa just to give it a nice bit of contrast towards the top and then this top I added some TD to the sort of pale pastel green that I got left and it's come out this kind of like a pistachio colour which is actually really nice Nice for summer. I like sort of, you know, pastels and creamy colours for summertime just because it gets so hot and I like to have something sort of cooling to look at and to use. So this one's a really nice soap for that. Um, so it's Sunday morning and I've just come up from, how, from the house to come and cut this. And then I don't think we're doing very much today. I'm going to cook a roast dinner. We haven't had one for months. Um, and we've got The Hobbit to watch. The Hobbit, the second one, so we haven't even seen it yet. We didn't go to the cinema this time to watch it because I think it was so busy at Christmas that we didn't get a chance to go. We should have made the time, but we just didn't. So we bought the DVD. So we're going to watch that today, I think. And uh, that'll be nice. It's been raining. It's actually sort of on and off sunny at the moment, but it has been raining for the last few days, which I don't mind. If I'm working especially, I don't mind. And I've been feeling, whoops, a little bit um, groggy. I've got like my ears, it feels, sounds like my ears have popped and I can't hear properly. So it's... Oh, this, I think it's all sinus related. It could even be allergies, you know. So, if anybody suffers from spring allergies, let me know if you get this, because I've been doing my head in a bit. Anywho, this is Rolling Hills. There's our gradient. There's the top. It's really heavy. I'm going to just cut that into logs. So, logs. And it's a bit strange atmosphere in here on a Sunday because nobody's here. Like the whole building is really big. It goes way above me and down below. Um, and it's a bit creepy sometimes. It's a very old building. And I'm just in like this back room. I'll show you. Excuse my mess all around. This is outside the back. There's my radio steps going up there to the a big car park at the back, but this goes right the way down this alleyway to the entrance at the back and then it goes all the way up and above us. You can't really see too well, but it's kind of creepy on a Sunday. And sometimes the cleaner is in for next door. She doesn't come and do this room, but she does next doors. And um, it's quite nice when they're here, but I do get a funny feeling in here sometimes. And also out, um, in that back alleyway, I see things all the time. <laughs> Out the corner of my eye, I always see stuff. And I think, you might have playing tricks on me again, you know? But I keep thinking it's a little kid out there. 
really strange. But, um, you know, there could be something here. It's so old. And uh, I don't disbelieve that stuff. At all. You know, there's just a few occurrences that have made me think, ooh. I don't like that. So yeah, it's a bit odd. Here's the first log. I don't know how how, how old the building is. It's got to be sort of um, pretty old because the high street here is old. Um, I mean, well, the Abbey and everything dates back to like God knows when. I know the Battle of Evesham here was like 1265. I've been reading all about that recently. Um, but the buildings in the high street, I mean, I'm not really sure how old this one is, but I'd say it's pretty old. But it's a nice building. The shop at the front's really lovely and the treatment rooms upstairs are nice and the basement's even alright. It's, you know, kind of just kept well, I suppose. Um, the lady that owns it, she keeps it in good repair and it's just a good old building, you know. But this place on the back where I am must have been an extension. But yeah, do get creeped out when I'm in here on my own sometimes. So you're with me. <laughs> Stay with me. It doesn't help, of course, that I've been watching Lost lately. <laughs> but no, in the week it's it's fine. There's no sort of I think it's just your own mind plays tricks on you, you know? I'm just gonna pour my coffee. I'm in this silly frame of mind this morning because my mom puts up. Uh, my mom is Pinterest crazy, and she puts up all these crazy stories, like ghost stories and stuff, on her Pinterest, and people who have spontaneously combusted and things like <laughs> things like that. So I like to look at these things that she puts up. She's always been into that crazy sort of stuff, and uh, yeah. So I was reading some. Not urban myths, but they. I will read. I was reading some stories that people have posted to something like. I think some of them have been on Reddit, and and there were some other things. But it was like stories that had happened and involved serial killers and where people had got away and then realised who they'd been in the car with and and um, things like that. So I was always, I've already freaked myself out this morning by reading things like that. <laughs> but I like things like that. I like reading about weird stuff, you know? I like peculiar things. Anyway, just going to aim you down so you can see the wires going through the soap. So, rolling hills. Mm, that's lovely. I sort of upped the lime in it this year. It's still the same blend, but I upped the lime slightly more than last year, so it only had a hint, but this time it's got a little bit more, so it's a bit more refreshing, citrusy scent. Which is pretty hard, and I hope these wires don't blend in. Go. And me. It should be alright, but it is pretty hard today. So here we go. That's Rolling Hills, with the black line. See what they come out like. I'll give them a good old trim up in a second after I finish this video. I, I stand here then and trim all the edges up, which takes me about, I don't know, half an hour. I did stop doing all of that, as mentioned previously, but um, I think it's better to do it. Because if you want to offer like a luxury product, which I think handmade soap is a luxury, to be honest. Well, it is, isn't it? I mean, you know, anybody can go to the supermarket and buy cheap bar soap, but handmade soap is luxurious. So it's nice to make it just add a little bit of perfection. So I listened to my boyfriend who told me to always be consistent and uh, 
I've gone back to trimming all my soaps up again, so he was right actually. Okay, so there's the last two bars on that log. I've got how many more? There's one, two, three. I've got two more bar soaps to make for summer now. I've got the Warrior and um what's the other one? Oh trade winds. I've just got the blending for well part of the blending for the warrior. And then trade winds, I think I've got all of that one, so I can do those tomorrow. So we've had a sale on all the spring stock and also a load of limited edition stuff went live yesterday. I'm not sure, I haven't looked at what is sold out. I know there's a few things that have gone, but I'm not sure what's left because I haven't been on <clears throat> to the website dashboard this morning to see. I know that a lot of it went yesterday. I wasn't expecting it to go as crazy as it did, as you, you know, it's always the way. You sort of think, oh, I'll just put them on and see how they go. And I did some hot process soaps and um, yeah, they went pretty fast. They don't go as fast as my regular ones. I did five hot process and five cold process, which I'd made a few weeks back. So um, I just topped it up because some of the fragrance oils I can't use in cold process because they don't work. They either accelerate or they go plasticky or, you know, something weird happens. So I made hot process with those. I'd normally save them for whip soap, but I hadn't got any whip soap base, so I've got to make that. Plus, I need to make a great big batch of the whip soap base for the summer line. So it's also the base for our scrub, the bubbling sugar scrubs, or sugar buff actually is what it's called. So. I need to make all of that this week and the body whip base too, so I shall be busy packing orders and making things again and then sorting out the labelling and getting the label sent off to the printer. I have been printing some of my own. If they're just test batches, I do them here and I just use a brown sort of craft paper just to do a label around the soap because with test batches it's not worth, um, you know, getting all the labels printed up because it would be too expensive and they're just quick nine bar batches, they're, they're really small, you know. But with these larger batches for summer, I like to get the labels done so it's like less hassle for me because printing is really costly if you have a lot to do and you try and do it yourself, it's, it's really hard. Plus, all the cutting and all that stuff takes a lot of time. So to get the printer to do it is better for me. Just, you know, saves saves a lot of time. So the only time I have to waste a bit of time is going to pick them up because they don't send them to me. I mean, I could ask them to, but I always pay the guy cash. So I go and collect my orders. And it's always nice to pop over to... Cheltenham, which is where I get them done. I used to work there, so I know the guy. So I used to work at a PR company, and we used to have to ask him for quotes for print and things like that for people's businesses and whatnot. So, yeah, it was a good contact to have to get my own labels done through him. So, and he's a great guy. He's really funny, and uh, it's always nice to see him. So, they are called, if you're local, <laughs> they're called Print by Design. And they do have a website, but they're really good. And they understand my quirky little needs for this soap company. I suppose they don't get, like, you know, normally it'd be flyers or bits and pieces, but not always, like, labels. And he said it is a pretty bespoke service that they offer to me, which is nice. Because usually, I suppose, it's brochures and things like that that they're used to printing. I don't really do a brochure. Well, I don't do a brochure. I should do a brochure. It's something that I want to do, but it's having the time to put it together, you know. And I certainly ain't paying a creative designer to do that, because they want £70 an hour. 
and I can do it myself. It's just having time to sit down, but I would like to do a brochure and then offer one for, you know, a cheap price, like a quid or something, just so people have got one to hand so that you can always have a read through at the different products. Because sometimes a website, I like to lie in bed at night with like a magazine or a brochure myself. So it's sort of like, God, I really need to do this, but it's having time. And whether it would be worthwhile, because they're not cheap to have printed either. So um, I'll have a think about that. But I like to offer one just to show the general catalogue stuff. And, uh, you know, sneak peeks at seasonal stuff and scent lists and things like that. Not that it's not all on the website, but people sometimes, I think it's better if you've got something in your hand that you can read. Because you miss things on websites, because some are so big, you know, you have to put that much information on them. Anyway, <laughs> there's Rolling Hills. And I'm going to trim it all up, and I will see you, I don't know when, <laughs> soon. Okay, bye.